Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 359, the Saturday edition, of course. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm Gavin Ashenden, and it's the 30th of December. Now, those people who are really keen are looking at the screen and saying, that's the exact setup they had yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> all right true we you caught us uh we had a long we have more news than we have time for so yesterday's episode was all about the, the new a ozan uh, foundation today is all about the same bishop talking about other things uh because it was heresy week 101 um we don't like to talk about politics often gavin but uh uh because the people who don't like Trump uh, join us in, in the trumpet because there's some, there's some things we don't like about him. Uh, the people who don't like Brexit, yeah, we understand what they're saying and stuff like that. Um, but politics on national level seldom makes it to the, the screens of Anglican Unscripted. Today's different because a bishop mm -hmm. has opened his mouth, uh, stuck not one but two feet in, and then it's time to talk about it. Let's talk a little bit about our favorite bishop this week. Well, once again, it's it's the leading progressive. It's Paul Bayes, the Bishop of Liverpool, though uh, with with our, our favorite Archbishop in the background, with Justin Welby, because so it, uh, we should start with Justin Welby, really. Um, well, well his, yeah, let's back up here for okay. Christmas service. What that should be the what what should be your main topic? Yes. Uh, uh, well, it should be about the the. the birth. <laughs> Of the living word okay. into the darkness of the silence. Incarnation 101. You, and so I was a little surprised when I'm reading through uh, Justin's to see references to things that have nothing to do with a manger, with the first century, with anything. I said, oh, time for Gavin. Well, Justin Welby slipped in a phrase which all the secular journalists immediately understood. And he, he complained uh, and attacked quote, populist leaders who deceive their people. And everyone said, he's talking about Trump. <clears throat> and uh, the, nothing came out of Lambeth saying, oh no, you've made a terrible mistake. Yes, he was talking about Trump. So having, having complained about Trump from the pulpit of Canterbury Cathedral uh, and uh, taken, I suppose, a, a, um, a very sort of easy and, and, and I guess very cheap political platform, um, the, the, the heavy brigade came a few days later in the shape of Paul Bayes. Now, Welby had said, as you remember, because we covered it, that he just didn't understand why evangelicals, uh, he didn't talk about Catholics or Orthodox, but, but he blamed evangelicals. Why evangelicals could even bring themselves to vote for Trump? He thought this was a terrible thing. And we, we, we suggested that, that, that he lived in too narrow a universe and too simplistic a political world. But here's Paul Bayes. <clears throat> and, and I'd like to read what Paul said because Please, absolutely. We, we have to we have to t take his words. So he said some of the he said this to the Guardian, our, our, our very left wing newspaper. Uh, some of the things that have been said by religious leaders seem to collude with a system that marginalizes the poor, a system which builds walls instead of bridges. Whenever anyone says walls, you think Trump. <laughs> that that's <laughs> a, a that's a, a key in word right there. Yes. <laughs> A system which says people on the margins of society should be excluded. A system which says we're not welcoming any more people into our country. Whenever people say those kinds of things, they need to be able to justify that they're saying them as Christians, and I don't believe they can. So, <laughs> so effectively, he's not just saying, like Justin, I don't know why evangelicals vote for Trump. He's actually saying that anybody who sympathizes with the particular government agenda uh, in America at the moment in his understanding, cannot be a Christian. This is a this is a really serious accusation. Uh, it's a declaration of political and spiritual war in in what is a fairly complex situation. I've I've avoided saying things about Donald Trump as much as I can because not only does it make people extremely excited, the, the two things that make people irrationally excited are Donald Trump and Brexit. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's the best thing. Yes. But when I put this up on my Facebook page yesterday, I had otherwise sensible people frothing at the mouth. I mean, they were they were they were doing the Facebook equivalent of dribbling hatred and spleen and writing the most terrible things in favour of um, uh, in favour of Paul Bayes and against anybody who stood up for Trump. And the really interesting thing was a number of American friends came on and said, "I did not vote for Trump, but 
these are the things that have happened to our economy. Oh yeah, which I mean, is geez. good for our economy, good for our society, yeah. going in the right direction. Obama didn't do these things, or foreign policy things. Obama didn't touch, uh, and actually, uh, just politically and economically, it's not such a bad deal. The guy himself, take any view you like about it, um, but, but the oh, is another matter. So, yeah, I, I mean, uh, as a voter, I did not vote for him. Uh, when it came to going into the ballot, I just couldn't do it. Um, it. It was beyond my principles. I have many friends who have the same principles as I do who did vote for him and others who did the same thing I did. I don't have any friends who voted for Hillary, which is a, one of the bigger problems. <laughs> was This guy walked in with no competition. Oh, well. Um, however... Uh, to show that America was just ready to explode uh, economically, uh, Trump basically hasn't done that much uh, except for uh, stop some of these huge regulations against business and work for a tax cut. And that caused this economy who, who this economy would do the same thing under Obama if Obama had just stopped fighting uh, uh, all this regulation and bringing regulation to business. Uh, and it was ready to boom, it boomed. And uh, Trump's gonna get all the credit in a couple of years for a booming economy. Our uh, unemployment rate for black people is down to 7.5%. Unheard of. We haven't had that since Ronald Reagan. Um, and so, you know, some of the great things. Is he beyond compare? Yeah, Trump's beyond compare. Uh, do I read his tweets? I couldn't, I, it would drive me crazy. Uh, however, have I benefited financially? Uh, this family has benefited hugely uh, under Trump because the uh, stock market has risen uh, in places up to 60%. Uh, and I knew when he got elected, I need to re rearrange our investments real quick uh, for Trump stocks. And boom, it worked. Uh, I, I'd I, like to move to, 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 to an Irish monk called Pelagius. Be because yeah, I think perfect <laughs> yes <laughs> and, and he seemed like a long jump you, no no like, it, 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 you're going right you're going the right way I'm, I'm hoping what this will allow us to do is to, to sidestep the mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to vote for Trump next time or I'm not going to vote for Trump yeah, next time yeah. argument but but, but the, the biggest problem we have is that whenever a Christian bishop says uh, you cannot use your democratic vote to vote for this person he really has to be on a very strong ground before he takes away the democratic freedom to express your vote. Um, the, the reason I want to take to Pelagius is because what we seem to have is, uh, certainly in England, is a hierarchy of socialists. We've talked about this before, and it will express itself time and time again, that there, um, there are ve there's only one bishop who said he's for Brexit, and that's the splendid suffragan bishop of Shrewsbury, mm -hmm. who came to visit me when I was in hospital. I, was, I, I want to... To, to, to say thank you to him. But, but we have so many of the bishops of the Church of England are all socialists. And the reason they're socialists, I think, is because they suffer from a theological error, which is the perfectibility of human beings. You can be a socialist if you think human beings can be made better, mm -hmm. and you think you can produce a utopian society of justice and equality of outcomes. But if you read St. Augustine, uh, who was against Pelagius, Augustine said, it doesn't matter what you do politically or spiritually or psychologically, human beings are so bust that they're going to foul up. And, and our only hope is a spiritual hope, not a political or imperial hope or, or a dynastic hope or, or a, an, um, a secular hope. Our only hope is a spiritual hope of a God who will mend us. Now, my fear is that the, the whole energy for LGBT rights and socialism and the mantra of equality only makes sense if you think that human beings have just gone off a little bit and they can be brought back by some by some ethical moral statist movement which will make everything better this is such a misreading of human nature it's such a misreading of augustine and pelagius that actually of course like all heresy uh, it leads to a misreading of god himself too so one of the reasons why this matters enormously is not because we do or don't like Trump, we do or don't like what he's done economically, we do or don't believe in a wall between Mexico and America, we do or don't think that mass immigration is, is or isn't a problem. We're governed by people who've lost confidence in a spiritual message of salvation for people. 
and who ought to be calling human beings to repent to receive the gospel and who instead have transferred their allegiance to a political solution because human beings aren't that bad after all and so they don't need to repent and we hear nothing about the call to repent from from the bishops of the Church of England and that's why I think we get this this soft socialism and that's why I think they they, they aim for Trump because they irrationally hate him and they they're theologically made a serious error about human nature I think so you said they they naturally hate Trump yes they do uh, you're supposed to love your enemies <laughs> it doesn't, and it if doesn't. I love somebody I can vote for them that's not too much trouble <sighs> I can see a problem here no I mean <laughs> It's supposed to be an exception to love your enemy. <laughs> well, <laughs> you have all your enemies unless they call Donald Trump. In which case, you must love him. Just denounce him every moment and denounce those who vote for him and tell those who vote for him then they're not Christians and they won't go to heaven. It, it doesn't. It's not joined up theological thinking. <laughs> no, it, it, and that's the hypocrisy: uh, is that we treat the rich different. And uh, uh, sorry, that's not what the gospel was saying. <sighs> oh, frustrating. Um, well, geez, is that you? Anything else you want to talk about with Trump there? No, no, that was it. That was that oh, was. We're gonna let people off with a do. short episode. People, go spend the day Saturday. <laughs> go out, and, you know, get your chores done. Um, I, you guys don't have Home Depot over there, right? Uh, we have Home what? Home Depot. Yeah, what's, no. what's yeah okay it's a place you go it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah it's a place if you have something wrong with your house or you want to buy a, a, a screwdriver or a piece of wood or whatever you go there for people like myself who don't plan ahead if i have a project in the house i usually make three or four trips to home depot okay. to, to finish so, so here it's, it's called b and q b and q that's what i've heard of that before and, and that that's that must be the equivalent of home depot <laughs> I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. You've been listening to episode 359 of Anglican Scripted. And as far as I'm concerned, you're free to use your vote in any way you choose. <laughs> <laughs>